I'm Jenny Trott and I'm going to be talking to you about all things motability in this video. It's a UK-wide scheme that's available to certain people who are in receipt of certain benefits. I'm going to go through all of that with you. I'm going to tell you how to access the scheme, why you might want to access the scheme and why you might not. Um, so uh, as much information as I can possibly give you in a short period of time. I'm not an expert. I'm a user of the scheme. Um, so I'm giving you kind of inside knowledge really um, as someone who has um, benefited from it. So stay tuned if you want to know uh, my experiences with motability and everything I know about how it works. The first thing that I ask when someone tells me they've got a new car is what colour it is. So from that you'll know that this is not going to be a car review. Um, I know nothing about cars other than whether I like the look of it and whether it drives nicely and right now whether it fits my son's wheelchair in the back. So this is really about uh, the Motability Scheme. Uh, first of all, you're going to want to know whether you can access the Motability Scheme. So there are four groups of people who can access the scheme. Firstly, if you're in receipt or the person that you care for is in receipt of the Higher Rate Mobility component of Disability Living Allowance, DLA. Secondly, if the person um, you or the person you care for is in receipt of the enhanced rate for mobility of PIP, personal independence payment. Um, I have to look at my notes for this one because I can't remember them all. Uh, the third one is the War Pensioners Mobility Supplement. And then the fourth one is the Armed Forces Independence Payment. So those four are the benefits that entitle you to access the Motability Scheme. It doesn't have to be the person who's in receipt of the benefit that, that applies for the car. If you have, um, if you're the appointee or you have guardianship of the person who is in receipt of those benefits, you can apply on their behalf. And equally, if you are the parent of a child who is in receipt of those benefits above the age of three years old, you can also apply to join the Motability Scheme. One quick, I'm gonna throw in little quick tips as we go through this video. The first one is be aware that you have to have one year left of your allowance to be able to apply. So for example, if, um, and we fell foul of this uh, last year, which is why I know about it. Um, if for example, your child, the young person is just about to turn 16, and so their DLA will usually be dated for their 16th birthday because then they want you to reapply for PIP. Um, so if you're within the last year of the date of the allowance being running to, you can't apply for motability and that includes changing your car. And that's where we nearly tripped up because um, you get your motability car for a certain amount of time and I'll tell you about that in a little while. Um, and when your um, lease runs up, you're entitled to then change your car to a new one if your a benefit is ongoing. Um, but if your benefit is running out within you know, a year of needing your car change, you might have a problem. Now, we were able to um, get an extension and we were able to um, talk very nicely to Motability and they sorted that out for us. But in the rules, it does say you need to have a year still to run of your benefit to be able to apply for the Motability Scheme. So just remember that. So we know who is eligible to apply for Motability. Uh, why would you apply for Motability? Well, um, it suits some people, it doesn't suit others. You need to be aware that it's a leasing agreement. So at the end of the leasing period, which for a regular car is three years, for a wheelchair accessible vehicle, so one that's been heavily adapted to um, enable a wheelchair user to travel in the car in their wheelchair, the leasing period is five years. So at the end of that leasing period, that car goes back to the dealer and you get left with nothing. So you have to bear in mind that in that period of three or five years, you your um, benefit has been being paid to Motability. You don't see it, it just goes straight there. Um, you lose that money in exchange for using a car. And at the end of that leasing period of three or five years, it's gone. So you don't have anything. So obviously if you bought yourself a car, a second hand car or a new car, at the beginning of a three or five year period, at the end of that period, you could sell it and you get the money for selling that car. Um, you also have to take into account that with the Motability Scheme, you get all of your servicing. Um, if it's 
relevant MOT and tax, your insurances are paid, your breakdown cover is done, so RAC, what have you, you get new tyres, if your windscreen breaks, that's covered. So there's a lot included in the scheme that you would otherwise have to pay for if you bought your own car. If you can be faffed, um, you could do what we did and we literally sat down and worked out exactly what the different costs were. And for us personally, it worked out about the same, but what swung it for us is that it was one less car for my husband to maintain. Um, because if anything goes wrong with your motability car, you just take it back to the dealer or the garage and they'll sort it out for you. So for us, that's what swung it. Um, it's very much an individual decision. A lot of people use motability, a lot of people choose not to. So it's not a done deal and it's a decision that, that you individually have to make. So that's why you might want to use it. It is particularly good, I would say, also for people who need access to a wheelchair accessible vehicle because um, although you can get hold of secondhand wheelchair accessible vehicles. Um, it's quite tricky to find exactly the right one that you're looking for um, and uh, maintenance can be quite expensive. So uh, sometimes swings it for people there as well. How does it work? So to get started with Motability, literally you go to a dealer and you sign the paperwork. You don't actually need to contact Motability Direct, although you can because they have a very good helpline. So the first thing to do really is to identify the car that you want and there are lots of different ways that you can do that. So if you have friends or um, people that you know who use the Motability Scheme, chances are that you've seen their cars so you might get word of mouth advice about what cars are good and which ones aren't. You might go to one of the big um, shows like Nadex that happen across the country and there's usually a ton of cars there that you can actually go and sit in and have a chat with the dealers etc. You can go to individual dealers in your local town um, bearing in mind that if you go to a Ford dealer they're only going to show you the Ford cars etc etc or you can go onto the Motability website and that's actually quite extensive Quite a good website actually it's quite intuitive they've got a good search facility that you can look for the cars um, that have got the features that you're looking for and it'll tell you which ones are available because you can't just get any old car on the motability scheme there is a list of cars that are available to you each manufacturer will make available certain models of their cars for you to use um, and there are a few different price points that you need to be aware of so if you look at your mobility component of your benefit, so let's say you're on PIP and you get the mobility component of PIP. So I don't know whether, I think it's something in the region of £60 a week, something like that. So you can either choose a car for the mobility scheme that is slightly less than that weekly allowance. And if that happens, Motability take their portion of the mobility allowance they're owed and the rest comes to you like it normally would do into your bank account or whatever. Or you can choose a car that takes all of that allowance. So you would lose all 60-ish pounds that, that you get as your benefit every week. That would automatically disappear. You don't see it. It doesn't come to you. You don't need to remember to pay it. It just goes before it reaches you. Um, so you can pick a car that takes all of the allowance or you can pick a car that's more than your allowance and then what you have to do is you have to make a one-off what they call advanced payment to Motability and you pay that when you order the car. So this is um, the case for all wheelchair accessible vehicles for example because the costs that are involved to adapt the car to enable the wheelchair to, to sit in the car um, means that the car becomes then more expensive and you have to pay an advanced payment to be able to get that car. The advanced payment is not a deposit, you don't get it back. When it's gone, it's gone. Um, I had a quick look at the website this morning and the, the smallest advanced payment you can pay for a wheelchair accessible car is 695, I think, just shy of 700 pounds. So, that's another thing to take into consideration with which car you choose and whether or not you want to use the Motability Scheme is that there can be a hefty advanced payment depending which sort of car you want to go for. If an advanced payment is a problem but you still need a particular car 
there is a Motability charity which you can find, I'll put a link below the film actually, and they will means test applicants and have a, um, a fund of money that is available to people to help them get the car that they need. So don't be put off by the advanced payment if you haven't got the funds to pay it. There are ways and means and the Motability Charity is the most obvious one. As I said before, but I'll just reiterate, it's a leasing agreement. So what you're signing up for is to lease the vehicle from Motability um, for a regular car, three years, for a wheelchair accessible car, five years. Um, so make sure, you <laughs> make sure you choose the right car because you're, you, you've got it for quite a while. Particularly important if the person who is going to be um, using the car has got changing mobility needs. Um, worth bearing that in mind. There are solutions if something drastically changes um, during the leasing period. So if mobility suddenly goes, circumstances change, motability do seem very amenable to trying their very best to help in that sort of situation. I believe you can return cars early. I think you lose a little bit of money by doing that, but it is possible to do. So when you're a wheelchair, let's touch on wheelchair accessible vehicles, right? If you don't know what a wheelchair access, it's a mouthful. If you don't know what a wheelchair accessible vehicle is, sometimes it's shortened to WAV. So you might hear people talking about WAVs. Um, a wheelchair accessible vehicle is a vehicle in which somebody can travel seated in their wheelchair. So they are particularly for people who can't or find it too difficult to transfer from their wheelchair into a car seat. And there are ways to get from a wheelchair into a car seat um, if you don't want to wav. So there are hoists that can be fitted to the car to help you get into the car. There are swivel seats if that would help you enough. But if that, those things won't work, then you can get a wheelchair accessible vehicle. And there are so many different types of WAVs. Um, there are ones with rear access, so some kind of either electronic or manual ramp at the back of the car that the wheelchair, I'm, I'm moving my hands around very well. I was saying that you have the ramp and you go in the back. Um, you can also get WAVs where you access from the side. Things to think about here is where you park, um, what your driveway's like, does it make a difference whether will you always have space behind to be able to to access the vehicle from the back a ramp comes out quite a long way so you need quite a bit of extra space at the back to be able to get your wheelchair in and then once the wheelchair is in the vehicle it's secured down really well with special clamps seat belt as well you must wear a seat belt as well as clamping down the wheelchair and then you're ready to go so ideal for people who cannot get out of their wheelchair and into the car without a lot of hassle or it was just impossible. Something else that you need to know about wheelchair accessible vehicles is that there is a middleman, which means that you can't go to a normal dealership to get a WAV. So you can't go to your Ford dealership on the roundabout down by McDonald's and get yourself a WAV uh, because um, they don't sell them. You have to go to one of these, um, I don't know what they're called, an engineering type, adapter company. There's there's quite a few across the country. Um, I'm going to put loads of links below because I can look them up later you see and I can put it down there for you. Um, but what happens is these companies um, acquire the vehicles from the manufacturers like Ford, they'll get, a, they'll get a Ford, they'll take it in, they'll do what they need to do to make it wheelchair adaptable. So they'll put the ramps in, they'll put the ties down, they um, bolster the floor so it's strong enough to hold the weight of a wheelchair and then they will provide that to you. So you get your wheelchair ac accessible vehicle via this middleman, which means if you want to look at them, test them out, try them, um, look at the different models, you need to go to these engineering companies rather than your local dealership. The way to find those engineering companies, I wish I knew what they were called. Uh, anyway, um, the way to find them is to do a Google search um, I might put a few down below, although I don't want to pick out any particular ones because there are a lot of them. Um, but a Google search Motability website will point you in the direction of dealers. Something that I didn't know when we first started looking at WABS though is that different engineering adaptation companies will do different adaptations on the same vehicle. 
So let's say um, you want to get yourself a, a VW that you've seen that looks a great size, you like the way it drives. Um, that company might put this type of ramp on, these type of tie downs, they might put privacy glass in the back. That company actually puts a side ramp in and they've got two seats at the back as well and the person in the wheelchair gets closer to the front. So um, make sure that you really look around and decide which adaptation that you want, not just which vehicle. You've got to do both um, because they are vastly different and it really does depend on your personal needs as to which one you pick. So that's a little tip about WABs that I didn't know before, so I thought it would be worth sharing with you. Next question, who can drive motability cars? Right, so I've got a little tip coming up here that not a lot of people know about. Normal standard motability will give you two named drivers on the insurance. So. If it's you and your husband, happy days, that'll sort you out. Uh, you can add a third person for an extra charge. So for example, you've got a child who needs to use the motability car, you and your husband, and maybe you've got an older child or a, one carer, then that's easy peasy. However, what happens if you've got a team of carers? Well, then you can get an open policy and that is something that is kind of hidden in the small print on Motability's website. You have to search for it but it is there um, and a quick call to Motability will actually sort it really quickly for you. What an open policy does me what an open policy does is that it enables anybody who is legal to drive and fits the motability criteria, it allows anybody to drive that car. Not anybody can get an open policy. To get an open policy, you need to prove that you have a team of carers. So for us, we provided a letter to say that we had a self-directed support budget from the local authority and we employed a team of support workers. Um, because you know, there's my husband, myself, my daughter can drive the motability car, and then we've got two carers, that's five people. Uh, so that enables those five people, and if um, my mother-in-law comes to stay, um, she's able to drive the car. So it makes life so much easier. So if you've got a team of support workers, um, you've got a budget, or even you employ yourselves, don't be put off by the insurance thing. Ask Motability for an open policy. You will need to provide proof, but it's so worth it. As well as WAVs, you can also get adaptations um, done to your car. I don't have personal experience of this, but I've done a little bit of reading up and there are some adaptations which are actually included in the basic price of the car, so you don't need to pay extra for them. And that might be things like a hoist to get your wheelchair into the boot of the car if you can't lift your wheelchair in, um, and some sort of slight adaptations on steering wheel or um, indicator bits. See, I don't know anything about cars at all. Um, so there are some adaptations that can be done free of charge included in the Motability Scheme. Others you might have to pay more for, but um, if you can get an adaptation done to avoid having to use a wheelchair accessible vehicle, then that might be the way to go for you. All of these things, honestly, I found the Motability um, Helpline really good. Um, I've never had, um, I've never had a bad call actually. They've all been almost super over helpful and um, really really friendly so if you've got any questions that I haven't answered which um, they're going to be plenty I know um, give them a call check the website out as I said the website's great um, if you've got any questions for me put them in the the um, comment section below and I will answer them or somebody else might answer them for you and um, if you've got a good experience of a particular car do share it below because we all want to know about good experiences don't think I can think of anything else to say about Motability actually. So this one is going to get stored away in the library of information on my channel. There's lots of other things there about, oh gosh, 
all sorts of things. Um, so go and have a little poke around if you haven't seen some of the other videos that I've made. And if you've got any suggestions about things you would like me to do videos on, please do let me know. I'm across social media, the links are all down below. Um, somebody's just asked me um, to make a video on housing adaptations, which is great because I don't know anything about that either. So I'm going to go away and try and find an expert um, who can tell us all about that. So thank you very much for watching. I hope it was useful. Um, like, share and comment.